Hey guys, so today we have a shunt to test. Now I've not I noticed these pop up on Amazon and boy did they look very interesting. So I reached out to the company and they were more than happy to send us one. So this is the TBD Smart Shunt 500 amp. It's a Bluetooth shunt. So let's open it up. All right, we got wires. Uh, these are for the positive lead. Uh, they're fused. Nice. I think there's a thermal probe in there and some screws. There's a manual. And uh, here we go. This is the start of the show. Now, this is going to look probably a little familiar. <laughs> Check it out. The TBD Smart Shunt. That looks very familiar. <laughs> it's clearly um, modeled after another shunt that's well known on the market. But yeah, so there's no screen, nothing. It uh, uses a Bluetooth app. This is about half the price of the other smart shunt that's well known on the market. So let's hook it up and try it out. All right, guys, I got the TBD Smart Shunt almost all wired in. We got to hook up this positive lead. Uh, they do have the nice ferrules on the end, so that's a nice touch. They include uh, two of these positive leads because, according to the manual, you can monitor the voltage of another battery, like maybe a start battery. The other thing that you can do is you can monitor the midpoint of battery. So if you've got multiple batteries wired in series, you can monitor the voltage of the midpoint. So let's hook this guy up. All right. So we've got a little blue Bluetooth LED flashing. So let's look for the Bluetooth app. And there it is. I just searched for it on the Google Play Store. So let's install it. And look, it found it. It says the default passcode is one, two, three, four, five, six. Pair. And there it is. That was super easy. Didn't have any problems with this app. So showing the uh, voltage is 14.2. Uh, there's no current beam drawn or power or anything. Uh, so we probably want to go in and set it up. There it is. Battery settings. So the battery capacity of this battery is 170 amp hours. Confirm. Uh, charge voltage, discharge floor, tail current charge detection. I'm not sure about all these other settings that so I'm just going to leave them default. Uh, we'll set state of charge to 100. Because this battery is fully charged. I wonder why it says, still says 99%. Should be 100. Synchronized state of charge to 100. I'm not sure why it's not going to 100. Okay, it believes that there's some power being drawn, but there shouldn't be, so I think we need to calibrate it. So we need a zero current calibration. And let's set this to 100 again. Done, done. 
synchronize, do 100. So maybe that fixes our problem here. There we are. Now we're at 100% and we're not showing drawing any power. Uh, so you might have to do that if you use one of these when you get it installed in your system. All right, fantastic. So uh, let's draw some power. Yep, so it shows that we're drawing uh, about 800 watts, uh, about 60 amps. Let's see what else we got here, graphs. Okay, so it's starting to build a graph here so we don't have enough information. But once we do, it'll start to fill it out. Oh, it has a history. Check that out. Of course, we don't have a history yet, but that's very nice. It has average discharge, last discharge, deepest discharge, uh, discharged energy. Very nice. Oh, if there's any voltage, uh, any alarms that have been set. This is really nice. So since this is a smart battery, let's pull up the uh, smart battery interface here. And then uh, let me pull up this smart shunt on my phone and see if we can compare the two. Okay. So, um, so we got a little bit of difference here. Uh, our current draw on the smart shunt says uh, 61 amp or 60 amps and on the BMS, it's saying 64. And on our shunt, it's saying 94%. And on the BMS, it's saying 97% state of charge. So I think uh, I'm feeling like some of these settings here need to be updated. Uh, I don't think these are correct for the I think this puker exponent is a little high. I think it needs to be like 1.05 for lithium. This seems to be set up for lead acid, I think. So let's let's change that. So first off, I'm going to charge charge this all back up. And then we'll change these settings. Okay, so we're charging back up and we're showing 49 amps going in on the BMS and then we're showing 47.4 uh, going in on this shunt. So when this finished charging back up, I'm gonna go in and, and try to make sure the all the settings are correct for this shunt for a lithium battery, and then we'll try again. All right, guys, so yeah, they, they really closely followed Victron uh, when they <laughs> built this shunt, and the settings are actually set to what Victron defaults their smart smart shunt to, which is for uh, lead acid. So I'm looking at the documentation for Victron. I know this is kind of cheating. It has lithium settings here, and so we need to set the tail current, the pukert exponent, the charge efficiency, and the discharge floor. Pukert should be 1.05 instead of the 125, so we'll set that. The charge efficiency factor should be 99. Confirm that. And the discharge floor should be like 90. Or I'm sorry, not 90, but 10. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where to set the tail current. So I'm going to leave it at 4 right uh, for now. And uh, when this stops charging, we'll come back and start testing again. All right, guys, so I've set this up and recharged the battery to 100%. And uh, let's try it again. So it seems it'll be a little bit closer on the current. So we're so showing about 60 here and 62, well, 62, 63 here. So it's uh, closer. So I'm just going to let this thing run and discharge down to, I don't know, 80% or something like that and see how close we are on the, the different readings between 
the BMS and this smart shunt here. All right, guys, I think this is uh, doing much closer. So it's saying 92% on this and 93 on this. And I think the difference is this uh, BMS is set up to calculate the uh, percentage based on the whole uh, battery, the, 100, the full 170 amp hours. This one we set up the discharge floor to 10%. So I think if we set this one uh, lower than 10%, like discharge floor can go all the way down to zero, then it'll match better here. So let's charge back up and try that setting, see if we get even closer. All right, guys, I charged this battery back up to 100%. And I went in and I changed the discharge floor to 0%, meaning that we can, it's expecting that we want to drain this battery down to zero, which would match what the BMS uh, is set for. Let's try this once more. See if we can get these per state of charge percentage numbers to match up. All right, guys, so yeah, that did it. Uh, as we can see, I went ahead and just stopped it early but as we can see we're 96 percent here and uh it says 90 if we can see that i'm sorry it doesn't really want to focus very well i don't know if it ever get, gets that but it says 96 percent here as well so uh as long as you have the settings set up properly for a lithium battery then it works as intended and um really this is pretty much uh Clearly a Victron clone, not an exact clone because I tried the Victron software and it doesn't work with it. So you have to use their software. But all the settings and everything like that uh, is derived from the Victron smart, smart shunt. And so whenever you're setting this up for your battery, if you refer to Victron's lithium settings, then uh, <laughs> it'll work. You know, you, you basically use those. I can't imagine why it would come default to work with lead acid, but I guess that's what the Victron does. And uh, clearly they're just copying Victron settings. But anyways, this seems to work pretty good. And I do like how compact it is. And it's just straight up Bluetooth. That's just really nice. If you guys are interested in this product, I'll leave a uh, link in the description. And uh, that'll be the end of this video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.